Hey church, how are you doing? My name is Olu, I'm part of the North location um, and it is my pleasure to be sharing with you um, one of my favourite passages uh, today and I hope you are blessed by it. I'll be sharing with you from Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, it's a famous verse um, and it says, guard your heart for out of it are the issues of life. Now there's so many studies on the heart um, and I'm not going to go into all of them but one of the biggest things I took of studying this verse is, is this. There's perhaps no issue that affects the heart more than the issue of offence or taking offence. And as I started to think about this, I thought, actually, um, if I take a knife and cut you, you bleed. If I clench my fist or clench my hand and, and, and punch you, you'll, you'll probably have a bruise, so it's quite evident that you've been hurt. But... On the matter of offence, what, what what exactly is, is, is hurting? Now you might say it's emotional hurt, but the emotions themselves are just really um, indicative of something that's going on deeper. So it's not the emotions that are hurt. There's something far deeper on the inside that's going on there. And I came to the conclusion that is this, that when we are offended, someone has trodden on our sense of right and wrong. Someone has done us wrong we we feel like we've been wronged and this is where offense comes from some sense of injustice and the degree of our emotional reaction depends on just how far they have eroded that sense of right and wrong i also learned this that that sense of right and wrong is is malleable and and can be changed and shaped uh, with some work um, and actually culture is a massive part of shaping that sense of right and wrong you'd be amazed at if you compared and contrasted cultures across the world what is perfectly permissible in one is actually offensive in another culture is a big part of our sense of right and wrong but in like manner jesus himself came to try and bring us kingdom culture and asked us to calibrate that sense of right and wrong with his mind or the father's mind and the father's heart and a good example of this is when the disciples came to him and said, Lord, if someone comes to ask us for forgiveness, how many times should we forgive them? And he said, 70 times seven. The thing is this, is that when we are offended, God can not do much with us. Um, and I think there is a great example of this, or the greatest example of this is given by Jesus himself on the cross when he says these powerful words, um, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He chose to not be offended by being hung on a cross. It's a powerful example, a hard example to follow, but an example nonetheless how we, or he, should I say, in that moment, chose to guard his heart and allow God to do the greatest work through him. So the question for you, or for me as well today, is, has anyone lost a brother, sister, uncle, aunt, pastor, leader, friend, because of offence? If on that moment Jesus chose to be offended, we would have all lost the saviour. In like manner, has someone lost someone because we've decided to take offence? Guard your heart, for out of it are the issues of life. Perhaps the biggest issue is the issue of offence, and offence comes when someone has eroded our sense of right and wrong. And God is asking us to calibrate that sense of right and wrong with his thoughts, his mind and his heart. The greatest example of which is Jesus on the cross saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Who do we need to just pray for forgiveness on behalf of today and let go of that pain and that hurt? Because when we do, then just as Jesus on the cross made a great sacrifice for us, we can be used of God to make sacrifices on behalf of others and see that God's will be done in the lives of friends, family, brothers, sisters, um, and God, I believe, will use us to really translate his message of love. Um, so God bless, and I hope that today you find it in your heart to let go of offence and allow God to move through you. God bless.